I'm a feminist, self-declared and proud of it. And to me, that means I'm an equalist. It means that I believe in women's rights and men's rights and, and equality of both. At the American Bar Association, we've started long ago believing in equality for women in, profession, in the legal profession and fighting for equality for women, using our skills as lawyers to fight for equality for all women, not just lawyers working on behalf of women's equality, compensation, opportunities, advancement, leadership skills, all of those issues that affect whether a woman can advance in her profession of choice. And add to that the fact that I will have the ability to focus on gender as one of the presidential priorities that are available to me. And will do so um, with strength and uh, with all the advocacy resources that the American Bar Association can bring to bear on this issue. Every single day of my life, every single minute of the time that I'm practicing law, I'm negotiating contracts for women and men in senior executive positions. I'm, in, I'm negotiating their employment contracts. I'm negotiating their severance agreements when they're terminated. I'm negotiating their retirement agreements when they have decided to leave their area of expertise. And I'm negotiating when there are mergers and acquisitions, who stays and who goes. So what I know for a fact, women are not advancing, women do not have equal opportunity, and the reasons might vary because there is much less outright, blatant, intentional discrimination today against women by men. But what there is is the remains of subconscious, unconscious bias. And so what I see every day in my practice are women who have been working for many years, who come to me to negotiate a separation agreement, who have not been making the same money as men and have no idea because they're not one of the top five reported named executive officers on, on a proxy. But then I also see the proxies. And if you take a look at the proxies, you see very, very, very few women in the top five positions today. Right? You have um, six, maybe, uh, six women CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, and I'm not quite sure of that statistic at the moment, but very, very few CEOs who are women. You have very few women on boards. Only 15% of corporate boards are women today. Women have been getting MBAs you know, <laughs> right, for 35 years in large numbers. Women have been graduating law school in more than a third all right, since 1974. Why in the world are women only 16% of equity partners in law firms? It's because women are not uh, speaking for themselves. Women are humble, right? Women don't ask, women don't brag. And, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Women don't make certain that people know what they've accomplished. And they're also speaking team speak, corporate speak, because they want to be certain, which is proper, to give credit to the team that did it. But the fact is, they have to, do, you know, they have to learn to say, I was the leader. We did it together, but it was my concept, and I brought it home. Women are seen as caretakers as opposed to leaders. So it's their relationship building skills that are valued, their supportive skills, all right, as opposed to men who are seen is taking charge rather than taking care. Men are paid more than women at high levels, at low levels. Women are only getting 73% on a dollar today and people say, that doesn't really mean anything to them until you begin saying, but African-American women are taking 60% on a dollar, Latinas are down to 42% on the dollar. But if you take away the statistics and you make it real, men lost significantly fewer jobs, but they've regained about 28% of their jobs. If you lose your job, First of all, it's not about women, it's about families not being able to eat because 80% of single parent households are women. Right? So when women don't earn money, children are not being fed. Right? So that's, I mean, that's something that people have to understand. This is not just about selfish women looking to succeed. This is about families being educated and fed. Men who recouped 28% of their jobs, they go on to be employed and re-employed and employed. But nobody is looking to hire people who don't have jobs today. Women don't like to push at the onset. They think, I'll just trust them to do right by me. So when we're negotiating an employment contract, they don't want to press for the sign-on bonus. They don't want to press for early vesting of options and stock. They, they don't want to press for retirement health care. They don't want to press for anything. They just think that if they do a good job, it's going to come to them. And we know that's not the case. Women are great negotiators. They just don't think they do. They just need a little confidence and some tips on how to negotiate because negotiation is about communication. And we're great communicators. We're great relationship builders. So if you can sit down and build an instant relationship 
with a person on the other side of the table, you can do a deal. But women are hesitant to negotiate on their own behalf for themselves. In fact, I see women, strong leaders, who are fabulous at negotiating for their friends and their peers, but they can't negotiate for themselves, which is really a shame. So my message is women, all right, just look in the mirror, practice a little bit, do a little role playing, get one of your girlfriends to tell you what you're worth, and then get out there and ask for it. And the fact is that I'm sitting here talking to you as president-elect of the American Bar Association, you know, 400,000 lawyers around the world. I mean, that's pretty wonderful. And that, and that, seeing a woman in this position, and I'm the fifth, not the first, um, that means that we have, in fact, made a great deal of progress. Any woman can help other women every single day. And this is all about the one-to-one. -one. I really believe in my heart that one person can change the world. And they don't do it on their own, but they encourage others to join them, and then we're, we're an army. So if you get on the Women Addicts website and you see the possibilities for other women, including yourself, there are several things I'd suggest. One, don't think it's not about you or that you can't do it. So that Women Addicts website should be speaking directly to you. I can do something spectacular for me and my family. Second, I can support some other woman. It could be a young woman that you've met. It could be um, one of your friends that needs a little help in their business. It could be politics, a politician. Even if you've never been involved in politics before, this women's equality is a reason to get up and out and vote for women. Don't think for a second that your state elections are unimportant. Your state elections control how much money is devoted to issues that are important to you. You can work for women who have been the subjects of domestic violence. You can work um, to, to make certain that there's, uh, with your bank friends, that they're funding women's new, new opportunities for employment and work. You can make certain that those senior guys who are your friends you know, at the dinner table understand that women um, should be compensated equally and that you believe that. Or you can ask them straight out who they've hired at the senior level. I'm a, I'm a big believer in paying it forward. It's not about asking a favor for yourself. Health. It's about doing something for others and then instructing them that as a result of the favor you did for them, they need to do something for somebody further on the line. What's important for us to know is that this doesn't happen with simply the time and increased numbers of women in positions of leadership or women in education. Time and increased numbers of women will not, will not erase the barriers that we face between today and equality. Only action, concerted action, only move in, movement and projects and support like Womanetics provides to other women, that will eradicate barriers. The conversations that indicate that inequality is alive and well and continues to exist, whether it's implicit bias, subconscious bias, or outright blatant bias, it exists.